Hi, I'm Jason and welcome to this section of the Chemistry Tutor. In this section we're going to talk about units and unit conversions. And so don't forget chemistry is, is a mathematical science so yes we're going to be talking about reactions and molecules and things like that but mostly we're going to be interested in calculating how much of something happens. How fast does a reaction proceed? Is it a violent reaction or does it take years to happen? So we're going to be dealing with numbers. And so as, a, as a, a preface to that, we need to be comfortable with the SI system of units, which is the, the standard system that we use when we talk about chemistry and also physics and other branches of math and science. And so in order to do that, we're going to talk about units. And then I'm going to teach you uh, one little thing here at the end, which is probably the most important thing you can learn as you start chemistry or any, any study of, of any science. It's the most important thing I know that has saved my life in terms of doing a problem many, many times, and that's how to convert units properly. It's so incredibly important. I cannot stress how important it is. Now, let me go ahead and say right now that this section right here is going to be a pretty good primer for you to just watch it, understand what you need to understand, and plow right on into to doing your chemistry problems. But I will say that for those of you who don't know, I have already created a, uh, I think it's four hours of unit conversions, a unit conversion tutor DVD that you can go look at on the website and get. And that has everything that I'm talking about here exploded up into even more detail um, with a lot more problems to give you practice. So if there is any confusion at all on um, scientific notation, SI system of units, unit conversions, go get yourself a copy of the unit conversion tutor because it extensively teaches you that stuff and I cannot stress how important it is because when you learn how to convert units properly you can almost do all of your problems without really thinking about what to do if you know how to do units properly. So let's start here at the beginning. Uh, for those of you again who don't know, uh, we have the SI system of units, right? So for length here in the U.S., we a lot of times talk about miles and inches and feet and things like that. But when you get into science, just throw out the idea of miles and inches and feet, um, and cubic feet and things like that. Just throw them out because we never use them in engineering, science, or anything like that. We're always on the SI system, which is called the metric system, right? So the unit of length that we're going to be talking about in chemistry, uh, the basic, I should say the base unit of length, is called the meter. And I know you've heard of that before. And we abbreviate that with the letter M. A meter is pretty close to a yard for those of you who need something to help you visualize that. It's, if you stretch your arms out like this, that's about a meter. It's just to give you kind of a ballpark estimate of how big that is. And this is the base unit here. All right. Now the unit of mass, which is how much of something we have, you know, in your hand, you know, how much of, how much of a quantity of anything you have, the base unit that we're going to always use is the kilogram. Uh, which is kg, uh, which we'll talk about how that's related to the gram here in a second. But basically, gram, kilogram, they're all in the same family. They're talking about mass. All right? Time, finally, something that doesn't change, we use the second. So, letter S. And for temperature, the SI base unit of temperature is actually something called the Kelvin which is symbolized by the letter K. Now later on in chemistry we will use the Kelvin uh, pretty extensively. I mean the Kelvin, just, just so you know, it's kind of